Greetings and salutations in our distance. It is I with Fotech and welcome to my tabletop gaming channel. Uh, today is our news day. I uh, was going to do one last week, which was going to include the first item on this, this news list. However, this is a short video because I only do like two or three top two or three news topics because I get into a ramble. And I had to control myself oh, with the power of a mint patty. <coughs> but anyways, this is actually, uh, if you notice this, this is actually a future sure thing I'm going to show off in a future video. But first and foremost, as I said, I ramble off here and there. Uh, the first thing is Paizo Publishing announcing saying that they will start publishing or converting some some of their Pathfinder 2nd Edition content to Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Not all. This is a counterpoint into arguments of people like, the, like the Professor Dungeon Master and a few others. I like Professor Dungeon Master and uh, from uh, Dungeon Craft and, uh, and a few other channels that uh, went down that route. But this is not Paizo giving up on Pathfinder 2nd Edition. This is literally Paizo taking, taking perhaps the easiest mod adventure path they have and converting it to 5th Edition. I mean the easiest in the sense that it is... It doesn't run the full 1, tw one to 1... Uh, the full 1 to 20 level gamut. And... The encounters or events in that adventure path are such that it's easier to convert to Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition mechanics than it is for other adventure modules, because Pathfinder is a much more robust uh, gaming system, first and second edition than Fifth Edition. So there. But beyond just the fact that pa Paizo Publishing is Converting its Abomination Vault path, Adventure Path to Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. They've also confirmed that they're going to convert one other Adventure Path to Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. From Pathfinder. And they're also going to convert several of their monsters to Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition from Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So... Okay, uh, I'm theorizing this is probably in a bestiary book. Look, and Pathfinder 2nd Edition has really good bestiary books that make even the best book by Wizards of the Coast look like crap. And that's on to my next point, in that some people in the D&D 5th Edition community and D&D side that don't dabble into Pathfinder 2nd Edition as much, or 1st Edition, don't realize, is that Paizo is actually good at making adventure paths. And they were the, the company that Paizo came out of, in its origin, was the group of people, the portion of the company, that worked with Wizards of the Coast, that was at Wizards of the Coast, that did adventures for Wizards of the Coast. So they they did w adventures for Wizards of the Coast. They handled Dungeon Magazine, the original, the tail end of Dungeon Magna Magazine in, during the 3.5 era. And they split off, they, uh, Wizards split off Pi Zone to a separate company. And it became independent. And they done, they took care of the Dungeon Magazine. And they did adventures in that, and then they went off of separate from uh, Wizards of the Coast, and that's the basic gist of the story. So they were the they were the people that were really good at making adventure paths and adventures for Wizards of the Coast. So people who stick purely to Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, I got good news for you: good adventure paths. I'm not talking about okay to nice nice adventure paths i mean good adventures are coming to dungeons and dragons fifth edition it's like 
starting startling difference there. Okay. Uh, the Abomination Vaults for Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition is projected to be out sometime in November. I think it's November tenth. So there it is. No announcement on the one other Adventure Paths uh, release date, as well as uh, any uh, bestiary guide, either bestiary book for Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, converted from Pathfinder Second Edition. Obviously, Paizo already has a lot of common monsters in all three of their uh, all three of their bestiaries that overlap with uh, Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. So they probably could just take the bestiary one and bestiary two, all the new monsters specifically to those and variants, and convert those to Fifth Edition. <clears throat> and that should put you around like oh say 300 to 400 monsters because the first bestiary book for Pathfinder uh, second edition is like almost 300 400 monsters and yet I walked away to take a look Four hundred it has four hundred monsters in it. The fur uh, path uh, bestiary one has four hundred. This is actually the limited edition bestiary. I think this one only has three hundred monsters in it. There's some really cool ones in in bestiary two. Some of the artwork, and then you got bestiary three. If you want actual group horde mechanics, Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Pathfinder 2nd Edition has everything that Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition has. But more of it and better. And, uh... I don't know when all that stuff is going to roll. Well, except for the Abomination Vault. My personal thoughts beyond that is I just basically laced it in already. The camera dipped. It's on a springy arm. Uh, and my personal thoughts is I've already laced them into my conversation prior. Uh, Paizo makes really good stuff. I mean really good stuff. And it's going to be really surprising and shocking to a lot of the D&D 5th edition people that do not leave D&D 5th edition. When the Pathfinder stuff shows up, up and looks way better. The artwork, the writing, there's issues with some, uh, some errors with the writing, you know, here and there. Uh, they produce a lot of books. So even if Paizo produced, if they converted like half of their stuff to D&D 5th edition, they would double what D&D 5th edition has. And their stuff is more balanced and has more versatility and uh, replayability. Uh, on to the second talking point, my clapboard. Uh, Hasbro has current Hasbro has purchased D and D Beyond. Hasbro is the parent, the only, the current owner of Wizards of the Coast which is the current owner of Dungeons and Dragons and I state that very specifically because there's a there's changes in history and then there is possibly changes in history into the future or that may not be the case so as of the moment of this video's production and the believed time frame of fifth edition it's that's the case so they have currently purchased uh, they are in the process of purchasing D&D Beyond and the reason why I say that, even though everyone says Wizards of the Coast or Hasbro has bought D&D Beyond, is because in legal world, you have to... I'm holding the rock. I got a rock. It came out of my shoe from work. But anyways, Wizards of the Coast slash Hasbro is in the process of buying D&D Beyond. They have to go through a whole bunch of legal stuff writing documents, all that stuff, 
uh, confirming ring that they have uh, purchased it uh, uh, reworking some legal contracts here and there between the two companies to bring DD beyond into it and at some point I completely forgot to write down the finalization date of it but it usually takes takes uh, a month or two from doing so and uh, there's that now the interesting point I agree with Luke from the web uh, the DMs layer which is a really good channel you should watch because he gives really good advice is on D&D &D, particularly towards dungeon masters and game masters if you're a game master go ahead and watch it it's you're just a different flavor of Dungeon Master. The more broader -er version. But anyways. I agree with his point. That uh, the likelihood of people getting vouchers. That uh, say. When you buy this physical book. You get the digital one for free. Is not likely at all. Or in fact so unlikely to happen then I'm almost willing to bet money on it and I do not like betting money on stuff because I have terrible luck I could be like the one person who goes was to the bar with some friends and relatives put a bunch of money down on pull tabs we could split up fifty or hundred dollars worth of pull tabs between us and I'd be the only one losing repeatedly every time it's just how I am. So, for me to say, hey, I would bet money on it is a pretty safe bet that you will literally not get vouchers that give you complete 100% off, off on the digital book. However, however, I do see, I do see a possibility of them including a voucher in future books, past books that have already been out for 5th edition, or modules, stuff that's already been out for some time. You're not going to get it at a rebate system to get your money back because you've already bought it. Maybe they'll slip a slip into this old stuff, like, hey... You go to the store in like a year from now, oh, and you buy a copy of the starter set or the essentials kit, or Rick and Morty versus says Dungeons and Dragons, or is it it's Dungeons and Dragons versus Rick and Morty? You might get a coupon in there. It will not be a hundred percent off. It'll probably be like five percent off. Okay. If if you're gonna get a coupon. You're going to probably get a coupon that's 5 maybe 10% off. But being in a large corporate, a publicly traded corporation such as Hasbro, who just spent a bunch of money on D&D Beyond, and digital platforms are cheaper for than printing books, first of all, all likelihood, the, when you go to D&D Beyond and buy a book for $29, the likelihood of it being $29 in the future is not going to be good. Um, it's probably going to be like $39 or $40. So you might have a situation where you were to you used to be able to buy like the module behind me on D&D Beyond for $14.99 and it's sold that module is currently sold for $19.99 or almost Twenty-four ninety-nine, depending on on taxes and where you are, uh, availability in the U.S. and stuff like that. I use U.S. prices. Uh, it might go up to nineteen ninety-nine, and and the physicals will stay the same price or uh, increase slightly. Just so they can put a coupon in there that says, as you get five percent off on the price. You know, you save a. Uh, you get a little coupon that saves you like five dollars or two and a half dollars but they increase the price by five or ten dollars so 
No. Uh, whenever you have a situation where uh, competition is reduced by uh, accumulate, a combining and accumulation of resources, you're not going to uh, make up. This applies to everything, corporations and government. Anytime power and resources are accumulated to a singular group or en uh, entity of entities, uh, you are screwed over. Because you might get an initial oh discount uh, because it's now cheaper because there's less competition, but once they clear out the competition, you end up even more screwed than before. And that's particularly a problem with government because unlike corporations, government has the power to take money from you by force, where corporations kind of like, hey, do you want to buy... Do you want to buy this product? By Reminder that I leave wrappers on products as a dust jacket. Do you want to buy this product? And you say, no, I got enough dice. It's in paper already. And then you like, okay, they don't want to buy it. They need, we need to make it cheaper. Or we need to put better stuff in it. That's how corporations are. Or the third option is they are going to make it seem like you really need this to play the game properly. Where government is like, nope, law, you have to buy it now. You have to buy it or we're taxing you for not buying it. Big corporations suck balls. But big government is like worse on a magnitude far worse than a big corporation. You can you can tell a big corporation to f off and go away, call their owner or an evil person. No big harm. You put too much power or in a government, they have police forces and military, and the power to take money from you. Which is stupid and foolish -ish, ish to put too much power into. But anyways. Uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, voting doesn't work once the government has too much power. But then on to the second, on to the third point. I pretty much covered it. Oh, yeah, the whole wizard, the uh, last little bit on the... Hasbro buying in D and D Beyond. Uh, people say that this is a pure win-win for everyone. I do have to remind you that Hasbro uh, shut down on its own character uh, generator and uh, archive and erotic. They shut down their character campaign builder and all that other stuff for Dungeons and Dragons Fourth Edition when they gave up on it and moved to Fifth Edition. So, yeah, you can you can go find character builders and archives of stuff uh, for fourth edition online, but it's not. If you if you put money into fourth edition digital assets or stuff like that, if you were to, uh, you lost out on it. Problem with uh, Wizards of the Coast owning D and B D Beyond. Oh, is yes, yes, it could be more refined. And they can have more playtesting data back and forth, so on and so forth. However, when the next edition comes out, or the edition after that comes out, all the old stuff might just get tossed into the wastebasket. And you may have spent a whole bunch of money buying books that you literally cannot use anymore, even if you want to use them. Which is why I am hardcore physical book. I buy the physical book before I ever buy a digital book. I will buy a digital book, but I will buy a physical book over a digital anytime. So there, because once you have a digital book, a physical book, you have a physical book that is useful for so many things. Uh, it's great for playing games. You have great artwork in it. Uh, if things get really bad, you can 
horrifyingly say you could burn it for or warmth if you there's like no wood around or anything or coal. But why would you want to burn your TTR PG books uh, when you really beautiful artwork by the Paizo staff has amazing artwork. But anyways, the physical book is a physical book. You can use it for the gaming. You can use it for emergencies. Uh, a good thick physical book, hardcover, also doubles as body armor against bullets. I said that on YouTube. I hope hope my channel doesn't, doesn't get deranked, which is it's brand it's brand new. So, oh well. Uh, it it doubles as uh it doubles as armor. Decent armor actually. Because of all the pages, which is our fibrous material, they actually, uh, there's numerous people have been saved by, have been saved by a, having a book in their breast pocket and got shot, and the bullet gets lodged in the book. Uh, they're handy for so many things. They're great idea minds. Digital book, uh, at any moment. Uh, Wizards of the Coast can literally say to D&D &D Beyond, shut down this section of books, or they can just literally shut it down, and you have nothing. You spent money, and you got nothing. Congratulations. Except for the times you've used it up to that point. But really, you're just kind of like giving them a large chunk of money, and then paying a subscription each month, or a membership each month. Or yearly, I do yearly to rent it for the time being in that it's open to you and you have your subscription active or slash membership. It's membership they use on DD Beyond. Uh, on to the next thing uh, Wizards of the Coast has announced they'll be having a DD Direct on April 21st, 2022. At 9 a.m. Pacific time, 7 a.m. Midwest time. And the reason why I added Midwest is because I'm from the Midwest. I'm a rock throws distance from um, uh, from uh, Lake Geneva. So I could just like pop over there. You got something new in there? I stop by and I pick it up. I had to go and get the new Elmore art, art, art version of this. TSR has artists, and they do have more er, than just one guy, uh, which is also a reason why I say a pi say Wizards of the Coast currently owns owns Dungeons and Dragons, uh, because you know it's a publicly traded company. Uh, anything can happen. Yeah, but anyways. <laughs> so they uh it's the future of D and D. Uh there's uh going back to the old uh report on uh I have peppermint patties, York peppermint patties, and I got Pearson's pe mint patties these box sitting in front of me. And I love mint product. I love mint. Uh but anyways Wizards of the Coast says that there's going to be a set of update books in 2024. This is 2022, which is roughly two years before 2024, if I can do math properly. Pathfinder 2nd Edition math is not that bad. You just do it on your sheet ahead of time. If anything, just get else. Uh, a little sheet on the side, he didn't do a little write down a matrix, and you're good. But anyway, back to the topic. So there's two years, roughly, between this announce uh, future of D and D announcement and the next update to Dungeons and Dragons. It usually takes. One to two good years of playtesting. Two 
make a good product. The way Wizards of the Coast does things, it almost feels like hey, they do it in six months. Which is... Well, actually, let's rephrase it. They probably do it in a year. They, they release the Unearthed Arcana. And roughly in six to nine months, the book comes out. Which they probably have done on another nine eight to twelve months prior to that of play testing of the material. The Radiant Citadel, which was another recent uh, announced book that's coming out, has been in roughly two to three years of development. And the same thing has been said for uh, which, uh, Beyond the Witchlight. Which was also another, oh my goodness, I think they said that they've been working on and off on that ever since the back end of 4th edition. So that would put it around 8 years. So, if anything, the next update version of D&D is probably in the first stage in-house playtesting. And they may be announcing setting this up as a more of a York peppermint patty. I just started eating one and I'm like, oh no, I've started eating one. Oh, now I want more. But anyways, <coughs> it's right around that time where in-house they're probably playtesting the next edition of Dungeons and Dragons Dungeons and Dragons. And I personally feel that 5th edition is not really advanced 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition advanced Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. It's actually probably like a halfway hybrid between basic Dungeons and Dragons line and advanced. And uh, my my money is that the next edition of Dungeons and Dragons is probably going to be called Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Next. Because, you know, ever uh, for the past two years, ever since Paizo brought out Pathfinder 2nd Edition, I see like a weird pattern where Wizard uh, Paizo announces, say, like, Strength of Thousands, and then in a month or two, Wizards of the Coast says, oh, we have, uh, we're going to bring out Strixhaven, which is actually a pretty crummy book, except for the fact that it has a oh, it has two really powerful feats, and it has a bunch of good monsters and some nice items. The adventure is not that great, and uh, the mechanics, the DMG actually has everything, gameplay mechanics wise, but better. Than Strixhaven. But then there's uh, Strength of Thousands. For Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Which is actually considered to be exceedingly good. All of the adventure paths. For Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Seem to be. General consensus are very well put together. Age of Ashes. Tend to, tends to be more. War. It's a more crunchier. Brutal. Pathfinder or adventure. But it's a Knoll adventure. That's what you get. It's a Knoll and Demon adventure. So my guess is that it's a combination. What we're going to get on the, the future of D&D is basically stuff that is projecting forward to the next update of Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. 5th edition. And slash Dungeon Dragons Basic Sick Four or Three, Third Edition or Fifth ed, uh, Fourth Edition, because Dungeon Dra Dragons Basic is really weird, because Dungeons and Dragons Basic game mechanics and lineage is actually in line with uh, OD and D, which I'm pointing at right above me, which is basically Zero Edition. And then you have the original uh, Holmes Blue Box, which is like 
first edition or 0 0.5 and then you have the the BX uh the BX set the tw the twin boxes basic and expert which is then like first edition Dungeons and Dragons and ba basic Dungeons and Dragons first edition then Beck Me is kind of like basic Dungeons and Dragons second edition and then you have classic Dungeons and Dragons, which is basically a cleanup of second uh, the old Beckme and BX boxes, minus the Immortal Rule set. So it's like basic uh, Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition is actually probably more in line with those, except it's like a halfway point between basic, basic and advanced. But anyways, uh, my guess is it's probably going to be largely focused around like maybe the next book and then the advanced Dungeons and Dragons coming out in 2024. I'm going to stick with Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Wizards of the Coast did 3.5. Another thing, as I, I kind of started with Dungeons & Dragons in the Watsy era. Of uh, Watsy era, you know, like 3.5, 4th edition, 5th edition. And uh, in conversations with many people who are far more experienced in such things than I am. And I'm actually honest, I will say that I started in the Watsy era. I'm not like some people on the internet is like, they act like they've been around forever, but they literally started with 5th edition, and then they claim they've been playing in past editions, but they get everything wrong, or they get a lot of stuff wrong. And I'm like, I go back through it, I watch like YouTubers, there's people that uh, who uh, played basic and advanced and advanced second edition, and they explain in the errors and misconceptions, and it's like, oh, that's that's not terrible. Oh, that's that's a really easy way to convert Thacko oh, to ascending uh, AC. Oh, uh, it's once you explain it that way, that's not hard at all. But of course, I have an IQ that was worked out to be in the one seventies. But I got the wonderful gift of ADHD, dyslexia, and uh, I'm a little on the spectrum, so. I'm a little wonky. But anyways, uh, uh, yeah, my guess is it's probably going to be focused around, it's like, a good chance that it's going to be projecting towards the play the future play test of the next generation of Dungeons and Dragons, and maybe like the next book. I'm gonna keep an eye on and that to see if I can catch any news announcements about the next book of Dungeons and Dragons. fifth edition and I'll probably lace in more Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu stuff and so forth I uh, hope you had a wonderful time watching my video uh, sometimes it's not that great sometimes it's pretty good so if you enjoyed it please leave a like and uh, consider subscribing and see you next time and have a delightful day and a nice day and a wonderful week